This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Live from Bay 6. I'm Kevin Harris, and I'm here with our special guest, Kyle Williams. So you, you ready to play some tunes? I think I'm thinking ready. I okay, warmed up. I'm not quite. Let me, give me one second, okay? I'll okay. be right back. Okay, what do you think? Does this, this work? It works for you, yeah. All right, yeah. all right, let's do it. All right, yeah, I'm on. Welcome to Live from Bay 6. Oh, thanks, Kevin. So tell me, where did you grow up? That's a good and long question. Born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I was only there until I was about two years old. Uh, my parents split up and mom moved us out to California. Uh, we were on the L.A. area, all over the place. I uh, landed in Paradise, California just before sixth grade. Okay. I've uh, been in the general area ever since. But So, so you kind of grew up in a lot of one. places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what was your childhood like? Uh, my mom uh, was a, a children's speaker, and she spoke at camps and churches and stuff like that. So we did a lot of traveling, along with the moving around mm-hmm. new places. A lot of traveling during the summers and all kinds of going to, I think, pretty much every state in, in the United States and doing camps and all kinds of stuff like that. So it was an interesting childhood. When did music start coming in for you? Uh, well, my mom listened to music a lot and was singing and plays piano, and so it was always kind of there and mm-hmm. always kind of sang and enjoyed being around music. Um, didn't actually start playing music till I think it was fourth grade. I took up the trumpet, uh, mm-hmm. and, which was actually fun, and my teacher said that I was progressing nicely. And uh, I hate the fact that when I moved up to Paradise and entered sixth grade, I thought it was no longer cool to play the trumpet. Oh. <laughs> so I stopped. <laughs> Middle of high school, I was about 16, and uh, I took up the drums. Uh, actually, a pastor friend of mine just kind of, he needed a drummer. And he's like, so, you want to learn drums? You. <laughs> I was like, sure. And so he showed me a beat, and the next week I started playing. Uh, and so really, really loved drums, and I still play once in a while. Uh, so about age 16, started playing drums, and it wasn't until a little closer to 18 that I really started getting a little more serious about acoustic guitar and fiddling. Kind of hard that. to be a singer-songwriter as a drum. It, it, it's hard, yeah. 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 And, I've, and I've tried it, uh, doing lead vocals for the drums. It's, <laughs> yeah. So uh, were you, did you actually, were you in bands and so forth? When you yeah, were yeah. Well, about a year after I started playing drums, I started playing in a little outfit called uh, Distant Voice uh, with some friends of mine, and that was just a lot of fun. Uh and that's a, a picture picture that we have. That was me uh, a couple months before we did the dreadlocks. And then up in the, I think it's the top top right, uh, that's actually Jamie Hector that we saw on the upright bass, uh, looking like he killed somebody. Yeah. <laughs> fun, fun times. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about who your personal musical influences were. A lot of artists that I guess might kind of sound like me, you're Jack Johnson and John Mayer and mm-hmm. J- Jason Mraz, huge inspiration and mm-hmm. uh, source of jealousy for me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like a lot of older stuff, some Bill Withers, anything with soul. Uh, and like I said, the music my mom had me listen to when we were growing up, the Carpenters and you know Whitney Houston and that kind of stuff. Um, I like a lot of independent artists that are still kind of getting out there. Tyrone Wells, uh, just really big influence. Uh, Dave Barnes, a lot of names... People probably don't know that well, but hopefully will soon, uh, are big influences for me. So Cool. So when did writing songs, your own songs, come uh, into picture? I'm told that I was about 10 years old and I wrote a rap song. Um, 
but I was too shy to do it in front of anyone. <laughs> and so I actually asked my mom at one point if, if at the church that we were at, if I could be in the back and everyone face forward and I could do it uh, without them looking at me. <laughs> Pretty much as I was learning guitar, right away kind of started writing. Mm -hmm. um, a really, really good friend of mine, an amazing musician, uh, Sean Downs, he's an Australian guy, pretty much taught me most of what I know about guitar. We, we worked together. Uh, and the job, we traveled a lot, and so we'd always bring our guitars, and he'd just be literally driving down the road, oh, no, this is a she shop, Major 7, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and so then I'd take the guitar and pretty much learn most of the theory and chording and everything that I know on the road from him. Uh, and as soon as I would start to learn chords, I'd start to mess around with, uh, you know, little melodies and stuff. Even before I was anywhere near proficient on guitar, I'd be writing melodies and lyrics. Right. And soon, soon found that it was really harder to put chords to a melody than vice versa. Well, I also noticed that you have a lot of melodic stuff within your chords. You yeah. Know? You, yeah. You do a, like a little, little chord solo kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you know, well, uh. You spend a lot of time just the acoustics, so you really try to fill it in. Right. Uh, which is great when you're solo, learning to have to cut it back a little bit once you get more instruments coming in. Right. But that's probably where some of that comes from. But. Yeah, it's very cool. Speaking of which, this tune that uh, we're going to do, Counting Miles, tell mm -hmm. me about that tune and where it came from. Yeah, it's a fairly new song. I uh, actually wrote it just south in Monterey. I was doing a little weekend trip and playing some shows and uh, had some free time, so I was sitting on the beach had my guitar and found a little chord progression I liked and started working on it. It's, uh, it, as the, the name says, counting miles, it's about uh, counting the miles, being on the road and, and stuff like that. Uh, and it was just kind of funny, um, kind of a paradox of how much I love music and it's such a blessing to be out on the road meeting people and right. sharing my music and getting to play. Uh, but it's, it's really hard when you got loved ones back at home, especially yeah. my, my wife, uh, it just really sucks to be away from her. So it's like, it was, just kind of playing with that phrase of, you know, time flies when you're having fun and it does and I'm having fun, but somehow it still kind of seems to be sl going slow. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, just kind of playing with the fact that the, the you know, the mileage is starting to add up, uh, cause it's a big part of the, part of the job being on the road. Uh, and so after a while, you know, the little, the little white lines in the middle of the road started to just kind of turn into one and just kind of go into autopilot when you're driving. Yeah. Uh, I've said that, um, if, if, if music doesn't end up working out, I might have a promising career as a trucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hours on the road. Well, it tells the story really well. Oh, I really cool. like this. Yeah. It's, I think it sounds really cool. All the little white lines running into one Strum a lonely song Yeah, all the little white lines running into one Strum a lonely song Yeah, all the little white lines running into one Strum a lonely song Singing time away makes this short life long Miles when there's so many, so many miles left to go. Time flies by when you're having fun and I'm having fun, but it's not the same when I'm so far from home. When I'm with you, days just like songs escaping from the radio, but now even a second hand move. Little white lines running into one Strum a lonely song Singing time away makes this your life long She loves so kindly So you'll find me spending time inside my head Thinking on how much I miss her rain puddle eyes I could bring her with me instead of say goodbye But sometimes loneliness is the price you pay For chasing after something in the sky Cause when I'm with her days Just like songs escaping from the radio But now even a second hand moves So The little white lines running into one Strum a lonely song Singing time away makes this your life long You make this short life so long The hourglass cares not for love So a covenant with him rings bitter sweet 
promises to take his time, but only if you're far away from me. When I'm with you, days just like songs escaping from the radio. But now even a second hand moves so. Turning into one strum a lonely song. All the little white lines running into one strum a lonely song. All the little white lines running into one strum a lonely song. Singing time away makes this short life long. So what is your life like these days? Well, you know, from the, the last song we heard, a lot, lot of time on the road, mm -hmm. uh, which is wonderful and getting to see some really cool places and meet some awesome people. Uh, and so a lot of time on the road. And when I'm home, uh, trying to put in as much time as I can with my wife and friends and family. Uh, and I actually, I'm able to do this full time because of a, a kind of a thing that my church did for me where they let my wife and I live in a house that they have. Oh. Uh, I do some music for them and help out with the youth group and some different stuff around the, the campus and they let us stay in this house for free. And so because of that and my wife's uh, full time job, I'm able to do this as much as possible. Very cool. Uh, which is just couldn't ask for a cooler situation. So you're on the road quite a bit. You're, uh, you do like how many dates a year would you guess? Uh, really only been doing this for two and a half years or so. So it's hard to track, but on average it's about two or three a week. Yeah. So that's like over a uh, hundred dates a year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, you're, it's you're been busy. A lot. Yeah. So how do you carve out time to write? That's a great question. <laughs> um, I, uh, as I mentioned before, I used to write a lot of melodies and lyrics without the guitar. Uh, and then trying to put stuff to it, I still do a little bit of that, little bit of that because of how much time I spend in the car. Mm -hmm. So I'll get a concept or a melody or some lyrics in my head, and so I'll start singing on that and working on lyrics and stuff. And then as soon as possible, grab the guitar uh, when I have a second and try to put some chords to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but so a lot of actually do a lot of writing in the car without an instrument. Just in general, what kind of things when you're writing, uh, topic wise, subject matter wise, kind of tend to get you going, inspire you? Uh, it's pretty pretty sporadic. Uh, I mean, a lot of life and just love and, you know, hate and whatever. Oh, that's uh, just, yeah. you know, uh, rage. <laughs> um, uh, pretty much this full spectrum, just aspects of life and a lot of relationship kind of stuff based. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is definitely for me, a spiritual aspect. I definitely don't try to be preachy or anything, but you know, there's some beliefs and morals mm -hmm. that go into how I look at life and just trying to share that through my songs. So tell me a little bit about the tune beautiful Sunday. It's a love song and, uh, it's actually one of, if not, no, it's the, it's the oldest song that I have that we kept. <laughs> there were a couple, so it survived the there, were a couple there were a couple songs that, uh, yeah, weren't quite up to par, but when I started writing songs, quickly realized that as a songwriter, the love song is kind of where it's at. That's kind of the pinnacle of songwriting and kind of the whole purpose uh, to get the girl. So, uh, <laughs> where we do whatever we do. Um, and so I sat down and wanted to write a love song, but I, I wasn't in love, <laughs> well, at least not mutually. And, uh, <laughs> And, and didn't have anyone in love with me and was not in a relationship and as a chubby little 17 year old had never been in a relationship uh, and so didn't have a lot to go off of for a love song and so uh, the concept was to write a love song for that person that would eventually be there mm -hmm. you know instead of you know your classic hey Sarah or whatever you know it was my beautiful someday right uh, and that's kind of the, the premise of the song just talking about the future and looking forward to that and which I now uh Huge blessing, my wife at home, just everything and more than I could ask for. So she is your beautiful. Found song. that found beautiful today, but it just doesn't ring as well. So exactly, exactly. It's a great song. I really like this well, song. Thank very you very much. much. Nothing left to say. 
say But for now you're just my beautiful someday Beautiful someday I try not to jump ahead But emotions cloud my view The only thing that keeps me hanging on Your children play, but for now you're just my beautiful someday. Beautiful someday. So I know you're working on a new album, mm -hmm. and um, uh, tell me a little bit about your recording process and how you go about it. Haven't had a whole lot of experience recording. Uh, up until now, most of the songs that we've set down to record have been pretty much played a lot, mm -hmm. and so we know what they want to sound like and uh, have people like Jamie Hector that play with me, and so parts are already kind of there. Uh, right. And for the first couple of recordings we've done and the demo that we have out right now, uh, I actually played the drums on it. and. Uh, my wife did some vocals, and so it was all already kind of there. We just kind of fit together. Uh, and uh, the demo that I have that's on iTunes, a uh, good friend of ours, Fritz Robinson, uh, did the whole thing for basically almost free. Uh, I've heard those, and they're, you know, they, they're really simple, but at the same time, it's like perfect for what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. uh, for these tunes that you have. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's like that's all you need, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, I'm, I, so I assume that... Do you, you play them out first and kind of like work them out as Mostly, you go? Yeah, never really stepped into a studio with a, with a brand new song. So where can people get a hold of these tunes? Uh, the best place to, to start is my website. Uh, that's ilovekylewilliams.com. Uh, and I, I tell people at shows, but I think they, that most of them think I'm kidding. If, if you feel differently, you can also go to hatekylewilliams.com. <laughs> Uh, but it, it just goes to the same website. So, and so from there, there's, there's links to my MySpace and YouTube and uh, to, to purchase my CDs once they're available and stuff. Uh, cool. Uh, at the moment, uh, the, the one demo that I have available is just uh, on iTunes or at live shows. 
Uh, but we'll hopefully be getting some new merchandise soon. So Cool. So tell me, if you had to uh, give age-old sage advice to someone mm-hmm. wanting to do what you're doing, what would you say? A couple of my songs deal with uh, not rushing into the next season, whether, whether it's something you're looking forward to and you're trying to get to that in a hurry, or whether you're in a crappy spot <laughs> and you want to get out of there <laughs> as soon as possible. It sucks sometimes, but everything has a purpose. And mm-hmm. so finding the right foundation to stand on and staying where you're at for whatever you're facing uh, is very beneficial and part of life and part of what helps you to grow and become the person you need to be. Uh, so just stand strong and don't try to rush through life for sure. Uh, I struggle with that all the time too because, you know, like wanting to get a, record a CD and just kind of waiting yeah. on stuff. But there's important stuff going on right now, too, before we get to that right. time in life and, and much more serious stuff, too. But, yeah. All things in their own time. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about Do What You Want. I um, wrote this song with kind of a duality. It's, it's partially about my wife uh, and just kind of in relationships for anyone uh, and also partially kind of about uh, my relationship with God or what have you. Uh, I heard a quote after I wrote the song, and it pretty much sums it up pretty well uh it says we come to love not by finding the perfect person but by learning to love an imperfect person perfectly uh and it's basically saying i'm pretty ocd about stuff and so when i go into a season of life or a a situation or even in a relationship i got it all mapped out in my head already you know Mm -hmm. where i'm gonna go what i'm gonna do who i'm gonna do it with you know what shoes i'm gonna be wearing you know and in a relationship uh, what the person's supposed to look like and talk like and act like and, you know, what shirt they're going to be wearing on November 22nd, 2011. You know, I got it all mapped out. And when you, when you, as How's that I'm, working out for you? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it can write a book. Uh, it falls apart. And to find true love, you got to find that person and love them for who they are. Ends up being way better than anything you could have forged uh, with your own plans. So uh, the song says, you can do what you want. I'm just going to want what you do. You can do what you want because all I want is you. Yeah, this is a very cool song. And I, I was kind of curious what the actual um, story behind this one was. And that's it tells it well. Yeah, thank Good. you. What 
you want Whatever you want Whatever you want from me You can do what you want I'm just gonna want what you do What you do, what you do What you do to me You can do what you want Cause all I want is you Well, that's our show for today. I'd like us to thank our special guest, Kyle Williams, and his buddy, Jamie Hector, for coming in and playing some great music for us. Uh, if you want some more information on Kyle and his music, go to our website and go to the Live From Basics show page. And if you, by chance, want to get one of our Live From Basics t-shirts, uh, go to our store, and you can get one there. Well, that's it for us. We're out of here. Oh, yeah, just check. It's a living document. Yeah, there's something in there, I think, for sure. <laughs> wow. So that's the pineapple. <laughs> it's also a great, it's a, a weapon. <laughs> the AC back on. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs>